Today we're going to learn how to play the Pink Floyd classic, Welcome to the Machine. Uh, this is really going to be more of the version that I did with Jada, and it's going to be a good example of how you can just jam on two chords for an entire song, but still kind of take it somewhere and kind of make it interesting. And the way we're going to do that is all going to come down to drama. Uh, again, when you only have two chords, you kind of have to use your dynamics, use different chord voicings, kind of go all over the neck, and just create a lot of drama, because that's, a, that's kind of like a word that Pink Floyd is all about. So let's dig deep and uh, summon our inner high school girl Instagram chat dramatic spirit animals and get right to it. And we're going to start off with this very dramatic E minor chord. And the most dramatic way you can play an E minor chord is by raking it from the bottom up. So basically, I've just got this pick. You can do it with your thumb, finger, whatever. But if you do kind of like a slow rake over an E minor, it kind of has a very dramatic effect. So all I'm really doing is just kind of slowly raking this pick up. And now I'm not coming straight up. You can kind of drag it out a little bit if you kind of come up at an angle, up and off. You know, I'm not sure how much that is actually helping, but visually, it looks a lot different. And you can kind of really kind of snap that last one out. In fact, if you see, I will link you to the performance below. I'm definitely kind of like giving Jada like the death stare right there because I was really just feeling the drama right there. So again, this whole song is essentially just an E minor chord and a C major seven chord. And uh, again, right up my alley. Love major seven chords. So let's actually talk about the different voicings that we get into and then how to kind of use them, right? So again, if we're starting with this E minor chord. All that was an E minor chord played pretty dynamically. So I'm hitting the root note. And I'm adding one inflection. So root note. And then there's that little kind of move where you open up the A string and get the hammer on to the second fret to go back to a full a E minor chord. Okay, so there's a lot of different kind of strumming going on there, especially that right there. It's uh, kind of like just a quick down, up, down, up, down. I would recommend you kind of do that really slow, like. And then if you really kind of accent that last downstroke, that adds a little bit of urgency to it. So that's something that you can kind of just incorporate in any strumming pattern aside from just this song. go to the C major 7 voicing, okay? So if you've never played a C major 7 open voicing like this, it's just a C chord, right? But your ring finger is going to grab the 3rd fret on the low E string, which is a G. So it's technically an inversion. The lowest note in this is C's 5th, C, D, E, F, G. And then you're getting your pinky where your ring finger was in a regular or, or common one. And then you're opening up your pointer finger, so we're adding that B note, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, 7th, seventh, no seventh note in key of C is B, so you have a C major 7, all right? And that gives it a little even more dramatic Pink Floyd urgency right there. E minor to C major 7. Really kind of like a cool thing that never totally resolves, which, uh, you know, just kind of like in your mind. We're not really resolving ourselves to being one with the machine. There's no resolution there, there's no happy ending. So that kind of stuff is really incorporated in their songwriting. And again, in Pink Floyd's version, there's a lot of synths going on, a lot of stuff is going on. So I would recommend if you're playing an acoustic version to kind of try to busy it up a little bit. And the best way to do that is to cycle through chord voicings so it doesn't get uh, stale. And we're gonna start by just different chord voicings of a C major seven. The first one is right here like we just did, 3E, 3A, 2G, all six strings. The second one, which you'll see me go to a lot in the video, is this one right here, which is 3A, 5D, 4, there's the B, 4G, and 5B. Now optionally, you can grab the high E string third fret to make it a bar chord. If you're really not jamming on those bar chords yet, just leave it open or just don't even hit it. 
So we can go from this one to this one to this one. Okay, now this is our third voicing of a C major seven. 8E, 9D, 8B. And everything else is open. The only thing I'm not hitting, I am, oh, I'm strumming it, but the A string, I've got my pointer finger on, so I can't hear it. Everything else is like a big kind of chimey, open sounding chord. So uh, one thing that I do to kind of maybe build a little bit of movement into that part is C major seven to the second voicing, to the third voicing, then back. And all that is, I'm just kind of taking some of these notes here, the 12th fret, uh, I'm holding down the bottom three strings, which coincidentally is another A, or another E minor voicing, right? Sliding it back to E minor, okay? Again, creating just a little bit of movement between these chords. C to C to C, build it back into the E minor. All right. Now, just like with that C major seven, we can do the same thing for E minor. And in fact, uh, one other thing that I was doing is I was kind of shuffling between this and this guy right here, E minor nine. Absolutely awesome chord, I recommend you learn. In fact, I will link you to a video all about minor nine chords you can check out uh, if you really dig the sound of that. I'm getting the root note E, which is the seventh fret on the A string. Uh, it's minor third, the fifth fret on the D string. Ring finger, seventh fret on the G string. Pinky, seventh fret on the B string. Okay, and you can kind of actually hit that open low E string to kind of drone into it too. Into that back and forth, just back to the C. Okay, so really we kind of have a lot of options. You don't have to play it exactly like I play it. I always promote just kind of making your own way to do things, which uh, again, I think will is better for your musicianship instead of just trying to copy what somebody else is doing. Just take pieces from guitar players you like, use some of the theory and the chord voicings and just go through them, all right? So just like we did with the C, we can do the same thing with the E minor. We can start here, go to maybe the minor nine, maybe a different. E minor voicing here, bar chord, E minor, or E minor seven voicing, where the root note again is the same, but now it's with my pointer finger. A power chord, so your ring finger's on the ninth fret of the D string, pinky's right behind it, nine G, middle finger on eight B. All right, and then we can kind of walk that right into just what we did before, the thing that we slid back. We can always go to this, the 10th fret, or the, the 12th fret, uh, bottom three, or even four strings, if you want to get a minor seven type. E minor seven type voicing, right? Just remember, this is your root note. You can This works for anything. So just learning this one kind of super simple bar chord shape, E minor, you can go backwards. E flat minor, D minor, C sharp minor, C minor, B minor, B flat minor, A minor, A flat G. Really cool, easy voicing that really sounds good when you slide into it or out. Okay? So basically, it's really just going back and forth between those two chords dynamically. And again, dynamically is just kind of like altering how you're strumming something while keeping in time. That's why it's great to play with a metronome until you can kind of just feel the pulse of a song. And uh, really incorporate a lot of palm muting as I do in almost all of these covers because especially when you're playing with the vocalist, you want a little bit of a volume control and there's no better volume control than palm muting. which I'll link you to a video on that if you've never seen that before. But yes, yeah, just use the side of your hand, karate chop the bridge, and now it's more of a deadened, less sustained sound. I think palm muting is probably one of the most important things that you can add uh, to your guitar playing repertoire because it's useful in so many different situations from a tonality standpoint, from a volume control standpoint, to a being awesome standpoint. So those two chords. Now there is kind of one musical break. Uh, that I kind of did that, again, I'm not totally trying to like duplicate like the, the Pink Floyd solo because I mean, that dude's just an absolute legend. Uh, now, to be honest, I only heard this song one time before me and Jada did it. Uh, but yeah, it's something like. I actually don't think I talked about that C major seven. All the, the thing at the end right there is a C major seven hammering on middle finger. But all this, this is just an octave run 
through kind of like an E minor scale type thing, all right? So we have E, which is 7A. Pinky is on the ninth fret of the G string. These are just two E's. I can add the low E to kind of get a triple E party going on right here. To the ninth fret, while still kind of hitting this E, I'm droning that note over it to kind of keep the E minor-ness of this. Seven to nine to 10, E's minor third, to 12 to that C chord, C major seven chord. Back to I think that's what I did. The second time, it's this same octave, it starts there. But then I go to kind of like an F sharp minor seven type thing. Again, a lot of openness to this song because of the key that we're in, all the open strings are fair game. So basically I'm just taking pieces of chords, adding the open strings to it. This one happens to be the second fret on the E string and the second fret on the G string. So I'm thinking of like an F sharp minor seven minor-ish type thing going on here. Into major type thing, 3E and 4G, and like an A minor type thing, 5E and 5G. Okay, so the first time is the octave run to a C major 7 voicing. The second time is that E to an F sharp to a G to an A to a C major 7. Again, don't totally even remember which C major 7 chord I used because I'm so all about just switching them out. I love all my C major 7s equally. I can't really just choose one. But uh, basically, this is kind of a lesson in cycling through chord voicings and using open strings to kind of help tie a sound together in addition to maybe adding a little bit of dynamics to your playing to just kind of take what is a simple song yet pretty complex as far as like their entire composition and arrangement. Uh, so just trying to try and, you know, pay homage to the gods, Pink Floyd, awesome band uh, that I don't listen to a whole lot, but I definitely respect those guys. Even though some of you guys kind of give me shade for saying I don't like them, I don't listen to them. That's different than not liking them. Again, whatever. But if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section on Instagram, on Twitter, or on the website, and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.